everybody. Welcome to a Fab Fit Friday on a very rainy, <laughs> a very rainy Friday. Um, Elsa came up the coast. I live in Connecticut and um, I got a great start to my day until my water, I mean my basement started filling with water. I ended up with about two inches of water by, um, I think I noticed around 11 o'clock. So I was downstairs shop backing and helping my husband clean up water. So I'm, I'm a little um, discombobulated, but that's okay. Um, hi, Sally. Welcome. Um, so <laughs> I put on my pretty uh, dress that I made last week during FabFit Friday. I love it. I went out to dinner last night and I wore it. Um, and I'll show you a full-blown like a full picture of me and my dress. Um, let me see here. I think it's just you and me, Sally. Let me just switch my view here. All right, so you can see this is me wearing the dress that I have on now. I really love it. Hi, Diane. Oh, yes. Well, I've lived in my house for... Um, 12 years and this is only the second time that we've gotten water in the basement so I really I can't complain it's just we got a wall up with rain and because you know I have my swimming pool all filled up with water I could tell that we probably got I don't know at least five or six inches of rain it's crazy it's almost to the exact top of the pool um, oh Jerry, Jerry says, hi, Jennifer, you look fabulous, matching glasses. I know, and my Birkenstocks match, too. They're like a burgundy color. I'm feeling very coordinated today. Um, good morning, Andrea. Um, good morning, Agnesinska. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Hi, Janie, welcome. Um... All right, ladies, I'm super excited to work on the raglan sleeve top now because I ended up with this lovely tee um, and also the red one that I made where I showed, how, showed you how to do the lining um, to finish the neckline and armholes. So in this sew along, I'm probably going to do a, a very short sleeve or tank version of the raglan sleeve top. And then maybe I'll make that into a dress, too. We'll see. Um, oh, thank you so much. Um, oh, Sally says, dress looks fabulous. I love the fabric and the design overall. Um, oh, you guys. <laughs> um, I have to say that I do like being completely covered sometimes because it gives my skin a break from the sun. Because you know how you're, you tend to get sunburned here, and I'm slathering on sunblock and... I'm doing a pretty go good job this summer, but it is nice to give my shoulders and my cleavage area a break, I think. So um, I am very excited about this. And I did go to dinner last night to, to um, where did we go? We went to uh, Burton's, which is a really nice restaurant. And I actually went out to dinner with my friend Gail and Pam and Judy and Karen. It was all like our little sewing friends. So we had a really nice dinner last night. Um, super exciting and the other reason why I've been very busy this week I didn't do a fit tip Tuesday video this week because I had a surprise birthday party for my husband on Wednesday and I had a lot of work to do to get that to happen so it worked out great except we got thundered and lightninged and poured on twice but everyone huddled underneath the um, I have I have a porch that has you know the ceiling that's off the back of the house so we were all huddled behind, under there, and the kids got to go swimming, and it was a very nice time, and my husband cried every time someone new arrived because I pulled off the total surprise, so I was super excited about that. So I am going to get back into full gear now. Um, I do want to thank anyone who's watching who has signed up for one of my classes. I'm teaching four classes in July. Starting this weekend, I'm teaching... Um, shorts for everybody for stitches and I went to check the link for someone who wanted the link for it last night and it said it was sold out 
which was a surprise to me. I didn't realize. So I guess I have a full class for, I either have a full class or there was a glitch with saying it was um, sold out. So I'm not sure which, but I have that this weekend. And if you've signed up for Stitches at Home event, if you signed up for that event this weekend, it's this weekend and next weekend, I am going to be doing a special presentation on Sunday at, I believe it's 1.30 um, Eastern Standard Time, and I'm going to talk about my process of how I learned how to do fitting, um, and I'm going to show some basics for muslin fitting, and then I'm going to show some common fitting adjustments. So I will be doing that. It's a one-hour presentation on Sunday. So if you've signed up um, for stitches, that's a free event that you can go to. All right, Jerry says, happy birthday, mister. Yes. <laughs> His birthday was on the 1st, um, so it really was a surprise to have the party on the 7th. Um, hi, Diane. Welcome. We have two Dianes in the house. We have Diane Bacon and Diane Fetters. Wonderful. All right, so because of all of this fun I've been having, I... I thought, ooh, I'm going to make a new raglan um, before the thing even started, and that didn't work out. But I do want to show you something here. I'm going to switch my view. Okay, so I printed out my um, the kangaroo pocket pattern piece. This is free, um, a free add-on to the raglan sleeve top pattern, and I put it in my store, and I will put a link to it below this video when I'm finished. But I just want to show you, it printed out funky here. It almost looks like the lines try to fill themselves in and they're a little bit chunked up. So all I did to smooth that out um, was take my French curve like this and I used a ruler to just, I used the curved edge and a Sharpie marker just to, you know, straighten out the sizes like this. Um, and if you get this and it prints out like that, I'm really sorry. I don't know why it's, um, I don't know why it's doing that because when I look at it in Illustrator and when I look at it as a PDF on my computer, it's com it's perfectly you know normal looking. So if it if yours does print out a little potch geat up, just use a curve and just sort of straighten out the curve. Okay, and really this doesn't matter the exact shape of it because this is basically just, you know, where you put your hands in, um, you know, and it's cut on fold here. So this is available on my website. It's free. And actually you can probably add it to any pullover top you want. You don't have to just use it for the raglan. Um, Sally said, uh, so glad your stitching class is sold out. That means you'll keep having to do sewing classes, which is great for me. Oh. Thank you, Sally. Um, Judy, thank you for the nice dress comment. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, all right, so here's what I want to talk about today. This is the instructions that come with the raglan sleeve top. And I just want to go to the back here and look at the size chart with you. So basically, for this pattern, I did body measurements, and then I did pattern measurements and yardage. Okay, so you have a choice of making your raglan sleeve top out of a solid color, meaning you'd make the sleeves and the front and back the same color, or you could have contrasting a contra excuse me, you could have a contrasting color for the sleeves. Okay, so that's up to you um, in terms of what you might want to do. So um, I just want to go through the sizing here. Um, for body measurements, um, so what I did was I measured the actual pattern. So for example, the size 14, um, it measures 46 inches across the full bust. Okay, so in the body measurement chart, I said that you could probably fit into that if your bust is 48 inches um, you know, between 46 and 48 inches. So you can decide how fitted you want your raglan sleeve to be through the chest by, um, you know, just comparing the full bust measurement of the actual pattern with the uh, suggested body measurements I gave here. And I basically figured out if you had two inches of negative ease, um, you know, what that would be, 
you know, what the max measurement could be for that size for your bust. Um, I work with the size um, 14, and my bust, and actually my bust now is not quite as big as it was before. Let me just measure here. Okay, let me just give a measurement for my full bust. I just want to see what it is here. Um, all right, so my full bust is 44 inches now, but back when I was sewing my raglans, it was 46 inches. So I fit into the size 14 very nicely. You know, it was um, snug, but it didn't pull hard. So let me just see here. Um, okay, so Andrea says, I prefer to use a check or a plaid to check the hang of a raglan before I go to my favorite fabric. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, oh, can you guys hear me? Barbara Wade said something happened to her sound. Um, it's still registering on my uh, audio meter on my computer. I hope you can hear me. Um, yes. All right. So that is a good idea. Like if you want to use um, a, some sort of print to, you know, try it to see how it's hanging before you use good fabric. I, that is a good idea. I do recommend using not your favorite fabric for your first one um, until you're sure that it fits. Now here's the interesting thing about the raglan. If we look at the, you know, if we look at the thumbnail here, obviously the raglan does not have a shoulder seam. Okay, so that's going to free up some of the fitting things that you may have to do because the sh the seam itself. Um, isn't going to need to be adjusted because there isn't one, obviously. But the the front and back armholes, that's where we can take it in or let it out if you need more or less vertical room here. Okay, so that's where we'll adjust those things. Um, you know, if, for example, if your top is pulling to the back, Okay, so like, let's say the back neckline is choking you. We can add to the edges of the back armhole to let it come forward um, and make more room for it to come forward. And then it'll hang right. And you can decide if you need to trim some off of the front, you know, over here. So I'm going to show you a few, um, I'm going to show you a few uh, pattern adjustments in a minute. Um, Diane says, what size represents medium? All right, so I would say if you're normally a size medium, I'm going to guess that's, I would say, well, I would say use whatever your full bust measurement is, um, but I would say the medium sizes would be like the 8, 10, 12 in there. So from a 37 full bust to a, like 43 would be the high end. Or maybe even just sizes 8 and 10, 37 to 40 inches um, would be what I would consider medium. Small would be sizes 4 and 6. Large would be, you know, 10, 12. And then 14, 16 could be extra large. And then the 18, 20 sizes could be like the two extra large range. Um, but I would definitely compare your body measurements to the pattern measurement. Um, because then that will get you really close. So check that out. Um, and I also put the waistline measurement here because it does curve in at the waist. So if I show you this pattern piece here, you can see it's got sort of a, you know, a curve in at the waist. So you want to check that because if you don't want your waist to be snug, um, you know, I'll show you how to adjust for that in a minute. Um, and of course, I, trust, I tested this pattern with 25% stretch fabric. So for me, I'm going to be working with those two blue colors. I just finished washing it. That's when I realized that I had water in my basement. Let me get that. Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to be working with these two fabrics. Um, and these are Tencel, 
knits that were dead stock from um, Eileen Fisher. I love Eileen Fisher. Her clothes are just so, you know, casual and pretty, and the fabrics are gorgeous. So when I saw that these were from Eileen Fisher, I had to get them. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this my sleeve, and I'm going to make the front and back the darker navy. Okay, so this is the fabric I'm going to be working in um, when I go to cut mine out. And just for the sake of not being too um, fussy, I don't have to match any plaids or anything or any stripes because I'm going to work with solids. But I think I did a video. The, the cover picture on the pattern is, um, it shows the chevron stripe. This chevron stripe was printed on the fabric, but I think I did do a video showing how to create a chevron stripe, um, and I can show you that now. So if you want to work with a, a striped fabric and you'd like to have this sort of detail um, in the front and or back, I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute too. All right, so these are my fabrics, all nice and washed and ready to go. Um, let me show you the pattern pieces and we'll talk about a few adjustments that you might need. Oh, and by the way, all the sizes for the raglan are on, on the pocket so you can get the right size to go with whatever size you're working with um, on there. All right, so I just want to show you my, oh, here's my back pieces. All right. Okay, so here is my, I'm sorry, my front and my back right here. This is the front and this is the back. Okay, and the things that I would say, um, if you don't have a defined waist and you'd like to create more room here, you have a couple choices of things that you can do. First thing you can do is you can connect the hem edge to the underarm edge like this and sort of make it a straight side seam, and that's going to give you sort of a, a skimming effect. You know what I mean? You can do that to your front and your back, and then once you have it on your body, um, if this ends up being too much room, you can just, you know, go, go and sew a little bit deeper once you have it on. Okay, so that's the first way that you can add ease if your waist measurement, just draw in the waist here, so if this waist measurement is not roomy enough for you, okay, so at your waist, I would relax the curve on the sides. That's the first thing I would do. You can also um, slash the pattern, and I like to do it right at the tip of the, at the top of the shoulder here because it's kind of in the center, okay, and you can spread that. All right, so if I... piece of paper here so you can spread it like this and that will add room all the way down okay so that's another option for creating more ease and this would work nicely if you need more room at your hem as well okay so that's another option for creating um, more ease in the front and or back and just remember you don't have to like if you have um, a tummy and you want to make more room in the front you don't have to do that adjustment in the back if you don't need it there okay so keep in mind that when you're adding ease you may only need it in the front but if you are going to straighten your side seams you need to do both the front and back side seams okay because they sew together and you want to make sure they stay a complementary shape so that's something you can do to add ease or to create a looser fitting raglan either straightening your side seams or slashing and spreading the pattern to create more room in there so that's one thing um, the next thing is if you like with your like ready to wear tops or tops if you don't sew yourself if you end up with too much fabric like let's say it's pulling forward and it's too loose here 
you can take this in here. Okay, so you can actually trim out some of this. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of um, fixing the shoulder seam. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust it along here. So you can literally take some off there, and I'm taking off a little bit at the actual neckline. Let me get it so you can see. Okay, so I actually would trim all of this off. I'll color it in so you can see. Okay, and then in the back, you can add to that. So I can add the amount I took away from my neckline here, I'm going to add here, and then basically you can fill that in. Okay, and that will give you more length to go up and over your shoulder in the back. So that's something you can do. Now, I don't know if I would do this before I make my first um, raglan unless you're sure you need something like this. Um, you can definitely take up extra in the front by sewing this or trimming it after you've you know tried it. But you can play with how much... Um, here, let me cut out the sleeve for a second here. this out because the top of the sleeve makes the sides of the neck opening. Let me just cut this out. Okay. okay, so you can see here we have, this is longer from here to here, so that's the back. And then this is the front here. This side is the front. So if you're trimming some off of the front, you know, and then you go to sew it on, you'll have less vertical length, you know, across the front of the armhole here, okay? And then if you add to the back, let me just put this over here, you can see that that's where you're going to be adding, oops, um, that's where you'll be adding length because this part here goes up and over your shoulder. Okay, so that's the uniqueness about a raglan sleeve. And if setting in or sewing sleeves is not your favorite thing to do, you're gonna love the raglan sleeve top because to construct this, you basically sew, you know, you put your front armhole together with the front, you sew that right sides together, you flip it open so now it's sewn, and then you do the same thing with the back and you put the back right sides together with the back armhole, and that's how you sew the, the sleeve on. So it's a much easier um, process to sew in the sleeve um, than it is if you had to set in the sleeve. So that's some adjusting we may want to do um, here. Um, the raglan sleeve top has a, a generous scoop, but there's no cleavage showing. So if you wanted to make it a closer fitting raglan like the like my dress, what you would do is you would continue the center front up. And then what I would also do here is I would put your front together with your back and find the center because that's approximately where your shoulder seam would be. Okay, so I would draw a horizontal line across there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace that on this paper, so you can see. So see, really, my um, neckline really goes up to here, because this is really where the shoulder is, the top of the shoulder. So if you want to bring this up, just put your front overlapped like this, you can find where the actual shoulder seam would be in the middle of the sleeve. And then you can raise it up. So like, let's just see, I'll use a different color. So let's say I wanted to do this. Okay, so I could raise it. Well, if I'm gonna do this, and I'm going to lengthen this part here. So let's say I'm adding all of this. Okay, let me just color it in so you can see. Then, you're also going to need to 
bring your sleeve in and you're going to have to add to it. See, right now it's like this. So I'm going to have to add a little piece of paper. Now, obviously, I'm working with a, like a little quarter scale at this point. But basically, what you would do is you'd match up the original. Now, let me cut this out now. I'm going to cut out the front that I changed the neckline. Okay. So I'm going to put this together with my original, like this, right? So I would need to extend my sleeve. I'm gonna make sure you guys can see this. Hold on. A minute. Let me make it bigger. Okay. All right. So I've got my sleeve here. So I'm gonna extend that. I'm gonna bring that in too. So I'm adding here. Okay. So you can see that I've added to the sleeve. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to get your back out here and you're going to decide on your back neckline if I extend this up like this, you know, to fill that in a little bit more. So I'm adding a little bit more in the back, let's say. Then I would need to bring this in here. Let's get rid of this. Duda here, sorry. Okay, and what you would do is you would actually line up the original sleeve. So this is the original edge of my sleeve right here with that blue line. So you'd line that up with the original back neckline and you would extend that too so it matched. So see, this would be my new sleeve. Okay. So let me cut out these pieces so you can see what I mean here. And the blue is what I added to everything. So this is going to close up the neckline a little bit. Okay. And you can see, you probably want to close your neckline up before you play with the style of your sleeve. Let me just cut this off so you can see the whole thing here. All right, so see how this is how the pieces go together. Okay. And you can see that I added, whoops, I added around so that the pieces will still sew together. Because remember, the armhole edges need to match, um, you know, when you go to sew them together. So if you want to close in your neckline a little bit, um, just make sure it agrees. So that's something you can do to, you know, bring your neckline in a little bit if you'd like to do that. Um, now, what I want to do is show you how I'm going to adjust my sleeve. Okay, so here is my sleeve. I want to make a little shorty sleeve like I did for the dress, because in the summertime I don't like to have, you know, very many, you know, very much sleeves. I do want to have a little, um, okay, so the way this sews together, this underarm seam connects with the side seam. Let me just get this back. Let me cut this out here for a second. Okay, so this sews together, you know, with this, like this. Okay, so that's the base of your armhole here. So what I'm going to do... Um, oh, I'm sorry, that does not sew together with that. But, I mean, they connect here. So, I'm sorry. They sew together like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, so they sew together like this. All right, so let's pretend that's sewed together. So, I'm going to just leave myself... Um, I basically want to have, like, a, an inch and a half of an underarm seam here. And I'm going to create a scoop just like I did for the T. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut this straight across first. Then I'm going to measure up. And I want the cap to come up high like this sleeve. So that means it, when I curve this lower edge, it has to be above where it attaches to the side seams. Which is here. 
Okay, Mary is saying, remember how you suggested I take up the t-shirt across my upper chest? How would I do that on the raglan sleeve pattern? All right, that's a good question, Mary. Let me finish this first, and then I will show you that. All right, so I'm going to make a sort of a, a guide for my curve, you know, and then I'm going to curve this up. So basically I'm going to make like a little cap sleeve, um, you know, for the raglan. Now here's the thing, if we don't have a little short underarm seam, um, we could cut it up here, but then we would have to finish the bottom of the armhole. Okay, and that is a cool style. Like if you just wanted a little cap sleeve that only attached like from the center of your armhole in the front and back, you could definitely do that. And if you wanted to do that, let me just cut this one out so you can see what it looks like. I'll show you how to make it even. Almost, it would almost look like a tank top um, on a raglan sleeve. So maybe I'll play with that and, ha and I'll wear be wearing that next Friday so you can see um, what that style looks like. But basically, this style here, maintaining a little bit of the, um, okay, so maintaining a little bit of the underarm sleeve is going to give you the look of this, okay? But let's say you wanted it to be only just, you know, from the neckline to your shoulder. So basically, you want it to just go over your shoulder you don't have to keep that underarm seam. All right, so what you can do for that is you can decide where on this armhole you want to, um, you know, where you want the armhole, I mean, where you want the sleeve to start to attach. And to do that, what I would do is I would take my front and back here and I'd put them together. So let me show you that. Okay, so here's the armhole. Okay, so those are my side seams. They sew together, and you have an armhole like this. I'm just going to cut off all this extra color so it doesn't look funky here. Let me just cut this off for a second. Oops. All right, so this is my armhole. Okay, so you can, the notches printed on the pattern, that's a pretty good guide for where I would want to finish with. Um, binding, let's say. So let's say from the notches, maybe a half an inch above the notches is where I'm going to have my sleeve start. So from here to here, um, we're going to have to finish that edge with binding um, so it's not a raw edge. Then the sleeve can start here. And the way you figure that out is you're going to measure the distance from the end to where the sleeve is going to start and you're going to mark that on your front and back. So for example, let's pretend I measured, this is where the, the measurements were, let's say. Okay, so then I can cut, let me make a line. All right, let me make a line first. Alright, so I'm going to make a straight line first, then I'm going to cut it off. Okay then I'm still going to make it slightly curved. Okay, and then this is going to be my little cap sleeve that's going to kind of almost look like a tank top now because, let me just cut this out, when you go to sew this together, Okay, it's only going to it's only going to create your okay. So it's this way. So see, it's only going to be up here, like this. It's going to look like this. Okay, so when you sew it together, it's going to look like that. Okay, so we'll have to finish the edges first, and then I think I'm going to make a little lined. Um, strap. It's almost like a strap. It's really not even a sleeve at this point. 
you know, it's just like a little shoulder cover, really. Um, this I think I'm going to line. So maybe what we'll do is we'll finish the bottom of the armholes with binding. We'll finish the front and back neckline with binding. And then the sides will actually be finished. Um, well, we can either finish it with binding by leaving that raw, or we can totally finish it, I think. We'll have to see. But basically, these are the two styles I'm going to be playing with to summarize this pattern. Okay, so I'm either going to be making the cap, little cap short sleeve, or even a tank top version where we're almost creating a strap over the shoulder um, with an open armhole. You know, and then of course, if you like this strap style, you can lower. If you want to have a lower armhole here, you could. So you could actually, you know, open this up a little bit and make it a little bit, you know, elongate the armhole a little bit um, as long as you do it evenly front and back to make it a little bit more open if you wanted to. So those are the styles that we're going to be working with in this sew along. Um, the little cap sleeve and this sort of tank top version of a raglan. Um, all right, so now Mary need, is going to need to bring it. Like, if you have very narrow shoulders, um, that's another issue that you may need to deal with. So let me look at these pieces here. Okay, so if you need to bring up your shoulder, there's two new front and back pieces here. I think what I would do... To bring those up it's going to be a two-part process we're going to have to shorten this diagonal a little bit and then we're going to have to make a like adjustment to the actual sleeve so to bring this in okay I think the easiest thing to do is to draw yourself I'm going to do a guideline to maybe you know maybe it doesn't need to be that, you know, just, I'm just going to deal with this top part here. So I made this little plus sign here, and I'm going to cut this out. Oh, let's make a guide. Let's pretend we wanted to bring it in a half an inch. So I'm going to do like a, pretending that's a half an inch. It's kind of big for this small scale here. Um, but basically, what you're going to do is you're going to slide this in. Okay. And then we're going to have to true that up. Um, and you know what? I think I don't want to shorten it too. So there's going to be a gap. See how there's a gap? Like if you just slide it along, what happens is it's going to create a funky true up at the neckline. So let's just slide it over like this because we can always shorten it if we need to. So that is taken in there. And then what I'll do is I'll just take a, a post-it note and, okay. And then what you can do here is you can sort of split the difference. Okay, so you're not really taking it in lower, you're just taking in the shoulder area here. Um, oh, Lois is asking me about the ratio of woven binding to knit arm underarm. As you mentioned, would that be the same ratio for a neckline? I think. Um, if you guys followed along with me when I showed you how to finish the neckline with a knit strip, I basically stretched it along the edge. That's how I would figure out how much woven binding I would need. I would sort of lay it along the armhole and stretch it a little bit. I would cut it on the bias and I would stretch it a little bit. Um, hi, Lynn Nickerson. Welcome. Oh, Mary said her, oh, that's right, I keep forgetting that. I'm sorry, Mary. Her, okay, so her, Mary's problem is not, 
keep forgetting that. Miri's problem is not this problem. Okay, if, you, if you're narrowing your shoulder and you need to bring it in, this is how you would do it. You would do it in the front and the back, um, and then the amount that you shortened your sleeve, so I shortened my armhole this much right here, you would have to shorten your sleeve that much too. Let me just finish with this, Mary, and then I will uh, get back on yours. I'm so sorry that I screwed that up. Um, but basically, what I would do here is I would just cut, I would figure out the amount that I brought it in, cut it, and match it back down so those edges still matched up. And then I would just true up those pieces. All right, so that's how you would take it up if it was too broad for you. Now, Mary's reminding me it was a vertical thing. She had to pick her shoulder up. It wasn't that it was hanging off her shoulder. It was too, she had to pick it up like this. So to do that, what you would do is you would, do I have another one? I do. So to do that, what I think I would do, Mary, is I would just cut it off here the amount you need. Now, if you want to lower your armhole too, you can cut off some of the, you know, you could, I mean, this would pick up, and you could cut some off there too, shorten it there. Um, or you could also split the difference and you can trim some I, I totally got rid of that sleeve. All right, so well, I can use this one. All right, so like let's say you were making the short sleeve version. You could trim off half the amount from the sleeve and half the amount from the shirt. So whatever the total is, you could trim it half and half like that. Okay, but if you... Oh, and... Because this curves in and this curves out, I think it's very unlikely that you will change the total length of that armhole edge, so you won't need to adjust the sleeve, okay? But you can trim half, because this right here is the length that you would be picking up, so I think I would just trim it off in this seam. Hi, Judy, welcome. Okay, so Mary, does that seem like that's gonna work for you? picking it up like this let me know but I think you can do that I don't know and the beauty of this is is you don't have to do it in the back unless you need it in the back as well and the other beauty of doing it this way is you can sew it and then you can sew it in deeper if you need to pick it up so this adjustment you can actually play with once you've already constructed it because you would just sew your seam deeper use a deeper seam allowance and that will pick up the whole um, area here. Okay, so that's how I would deal with that. So here's how you would make a more narrow shoulder. Here's how you would pick up extra. And so what you would do here is you would just cut this off. You know, and like I said, if you split it half and half with the armhole edge. Now the other thing is you may not need to take it up at the actual neckline. Oh, Mary said she'll give it a try. You know, if the neckline itself is fine, you can start, leave the neckline alone and just take it up where you need it, like under here. You know what I mean? Like you can leave this the same if you need to. So leave it the same and then just dig it out a little bit in the middle. That's another option. But the, like I said, the cool thing is you could have it constructed and on your body. And I, what I would do is I would put it on inside out so you can pin that seam, you know, down the, the length of the armhole to see how much you need to pick it up. Okay, so that's how I would fix that. All right, so does anybody have any questions about the two different armholes, we're gonna, the two different sleeve things we're gonna try? Let me see if I can find my other little sleeve. I think I lost the little, little one. But basically, we're either going to do this or we're going to even do something more dramatic and make it part bind it, binding and part sleeve. Okay, so we're going to work on that. 
and then we're also going to, if you need to add ease, you can do it like this. You can do it front and or back or just front. Um, and then if you need to take in the, the width, you're going to do that. Oh, Mary says, I happen to have it on today. I will do that when this is done. Oh, good. All right. Yeah, let me know, Mary, because if that doesn't work, I'll play around with other ideas. Um, all right, so I think that addresses most everything. The one thing is, measure from, you know, if you want to measure from your center back down to where the waist is, if this is too long and you need to shorten it at the waist, um, you know, you want to do that before you add ease because if you shorten it, you're going to be bringing up the wider part of the pattern. So, for example, if you measure from the base of your neck down to the hem and it's just way too long and the waist is low, you know, where the narrowest part of the thing is, I would measure from here to the waist and make sure that the narrowest part of the pattern is where your narrowest part is if you're not going to straighten the seam. If you're going to straighten the seam, it doesn't matter. You really don't need to shorten it. But if you want this narrow part in here to be where your narrow part is, measure center back to your waist. And then if it's too low, you're going to cut it and pick it up. And you can see when we do that, you end up dragging the bigger part of the pattern up a little bit. Okay, so make sure you get that small, you know, the curve in the side seam where it needs to be. That's the other thing. So, and if you do it in the front, you have to do it in the back so your side seams are still the same length. Okay, so let's just review. If you look at the pattern cover and you decide, um, you know, you want your neckline to be a little bit higher, then fill it in like I showed. Start by filling in the neckline and then attach the, um, attach the sleeve to it so you can see... You know, make sure you're lengthening, you know, them the same, and then add the amount you need in the back. Okay, so that's how you close the neckline if you'd like it a little bit more closed. Um, if you need to add ease, you're going to slash and spread, or just straighten out your side seams. Those are the two things you can do to add ease. So you can straighten this out. And you don't even have to make it completely straight. You can just fill it in a little bit if you want to, too. All right, so those are the ways to add ease. Um, then you're going to make yourself your short sleeve, okay, by measuring down about an inch and a half on each side seam, I mean underarm seam, draw a straight line, and then scoop it out a little bit to give it a, a cap shape. Okay, so you're going to do that. And... That's about it. And then if you're going to need to play with the vertical length, remember you can trim it along here if you need to. You know, front and back, maybe just front. Um, I think if you have more than, like if you can pinch out a whole half inch, Mary, I would take a half inch off of the armhole and half off the actual sleeve cap. I would split it. So it stays, so the line doesn't get, you know, so you're not dragging your sleeve lower. Okay, so if it's more than half an inch, I would split it and take a half an inch off here and a half an inch off that edge. All right, so that would be my little fitting tutorial for today. Does anybody have any specific questions about um, anything that they're worried about fitting their raglan? I will tell you, my friend Eric came over um, a while ago, and he was actually designing a raglan for himself. And he had a lot of drag lines. You know, his sleeve on a raglan, his raglan, there were drag lines coming down the sleeve. And then we did some research, and we looked, like, at fashion catalogs for raglans. And almost every picture of every raglan sleeve top we could find for a man 
had some sort of drag lines or loose, you know, ease um, folds along their sleeve. Now, my pattern on me doesn't really have that because the sleeve is very fitted. So the other thing you might want to do before you cut it out is measure, you know, measure your bicep. So right from your underarm around the widest part of your arm right here, measure that and then compare it to what the pattern measures right here. Let me show you. Um, okay, so measure the sleeve about a half an inch below the arm, the cap here. If you measure that and compare it to your bicep, you want those measurements, you don't want to have, I would say, more than an inch, inch and a half of ease, because you want it to be a fitted sleeve. You know, even though it's going to be short, you know, we want to make sure it's either, it, I mean, it could be up to an inch smaller, um, and not more than an inch or an inch and a half bigger than your sleeve. If you need to take this in, what I would do, or let it out, let me show you, because what you can do is you can create a, I'm just going to create a box here. So like if I cut across here, leaving hinges, and then I cut across here, leaving hinges, I can either, ex I can expand them, you know, I can push them out a little bit. Let me just separate these. You know, we can push it out a little bit like this. Let me get... All right, actually, first, if you need to take it in, you're going to overlap. That's easier. So basically, you overlap the two, and then you put it back together, and it will um, take up the extra in the sleeve. So I've overlapped it and I got rid of about a half an inch. Let me show you the overlap, wait a minute. So basically I overlapped it like this. You know, and then it's also overlapped, you know, like this. Kind of like that. Okay, so you can cut it like a T or an X and you can get rid of ease there if you need to. And then if you need to spread it, you can also spread it like this. And then I can use the... Let me just do this, you can see. So if I spread it like that... Because you don't want... You don't want the fabric going over your shoulder to have to be pulled too hard because it'll pull at the front and back of your top too if it's too big, I mean, or too small. So when you spread it, you're going to overlap it a little bit like that. Okay, so that's how you add. And you would do the reverse if you need to um, make it, you know, smaller, just overlap those pieces. Okay, Jerry, large bicep adjustment right here. Okay, so what I would do is I would adjust the whole long sleeve like this, trace a copy, and then make your short sleeve from the adjusted sleeve. Okay, so you have it um, if you want to make a long sleeve. And Andrea says, I have a problem with the sleeve hanging. The drag lines are quite heavy. I sent a photo to show you. Did you just send it now? Did you email it to me? Um, all right, so I don't know where you sent it, but if you, if I look at it, I will address that next week. I don't see where, all right, hold on one second. Um, all right. I don't know where the picture is that you sent me, Andrea. Did you text it to me? No. All right, well, I will find that picture, and I will try to um, diagnose what's going on with heavy drag lines. Um, I tend to think, oh, you sent it to me about 50, did you email it, or did you text it? Let's see. 
Um, let me go to my mail here. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I see. All right, I'm sorry. All right, let's look at this. All right, so here is Andrea's drag lines. Let me show everybody. It's a sort of a gray picture, but it's they're coming from the back to the front. So basically, she's getting drag lines um, from the shoulder, and they're curling around to the front. Hmm. Now, Andrea, can you pinch them out if you sew it deeper along your front seam? See if you can pull it, pull the fabric in by sewing in a deeper seam there. It may be that you need to sew a deeper seam in the front and let the back seam out because it's almost like it's not balanced on your arm. And it also looks like, like it might be a little bit too tight because it looks like it's stressing from the underarm seam too. All right, I'm gonna have to play with that. I might actually make a, um, I'm gonna try to figure that out. So let me, let me think on that. No, you can't take it in by taking it in deeper there. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to figure out how to fix that. I have a bunch of really inexpensive knit that Eric gave me, and I have another friend that gave me a bunch of knit too that doesn't have good recovery. So it's perfect, um, perfect for testing. Oh, Judy wants to know if that's a hollow chest. Uh oh. If you pull it in at the center front, Andrea, does that fix it? Like if you go like this and pull it, pull it up so it pulls the seam in a little bit, does that fix it? Let me know about that if you pull it in in the front. Um, it isn't balanced. I'll send you a photo of the back as well. All right, I'm going to be troubleshooting Andrea's wrinkle because I have a feeling it's going to be a wrinkle that other people may have. So I will be playing with that and working with Andrea behind the scenes. Andrea, we'll work on it via email and pictures um, to try to figure out what's going on there. Because it, it could be... See, and to me, this, the seam um, between the arm and the front seems really high to me in the front. Like, I'm almost thinking if you cut some off the front and added it to the back, if that would fix it. Because to me, and it could just be the way this, is this my pattern? Um, Andrea, let me know if this is my pattern. Judy says, I have a very long back with hunched shoulders, forward head, small bust, hollow chest, remove from the front and add to the back. Yes, that's how you would fix all of that, remove from the front and add to the back. And that's what I think needs to happen out with the sleeve here, to trim some off there and add it to the back. But I, I want to play with it some more. Yeah, so if that's the case, um... You probably, if everything is forward, you need less length here and you need more in the back to get around. So I would add probably to your back armhole. Okay, so if this is my pattern, I feel like this seam is too high up on you. I feel like the arm, the seam between the sleeve and the front should be down a little lower. So I think what I would do is I would chop off um, almost an inch on the front and add it to the back because that's very high up and on me and other people that I've seen wear my raglan it's the, that seam is a little bit more forward I think I think it's too far back on you so if you pull it down and then relax the back I think that will help um, but let me know um, if you think that's working because if it's not I will think about it some more okay all right so I just got confirmation from Stitches that my shorts class did in fact sell out. So I'm going to have a very busy week um, because 
if you're taking my shorts class at Stitches, you also get a free fitting. All right, so Judy says, sometimes it is a much larger back size and use a, a smaller front size. Um, that, I mean, that inherently t takes care of some of that problem. If you're using a smaller size in the front, it is pulling it in, you know, and letting, letting it out in the back. Um, but definitely if your head is forward, if your shoulders are forward, you need more in the back. Okay, so I would add to those areas in the back. So I would add, you know, I think I would even add to this back neckline, you know, and then you can also add here, right, and make it a little bit longer even, fill that into the neck. Then in the front, I would take that amount off. So in the front... I would do the reverse of what I showed before. I would actually come down so you're shortening it in addition to taking it off. So here you're adding, okay? But you're not just adding along the edge, you're also extending the edge up and you're adding to the back neckline too. Because if your head is forward, you need more length to get up there. Okay, and then in the front, you're cutting off this and this. So see, this is cut off and that's added. And if you want to, you know, if you want to split the difference, like I said, if you want to add some to the back sleeve edge and add some to the back, you can. Trim a little off the front and trim a little off the front sleeve, you can. But just remember, if you shorten, if you cut this little bit off of your front, then you also need to cut it off of the front here. You see, you would have to cut it off here, too, the length. That's the neckline here. But then you're adding it to the back, so it would almost be like a, a crisscross kind of situation. So your sleeve would go from cutting off to adding. Okay, so you're adding here, and you're trimming here to make that agree with what you did at the neckline up here and trimming it off here. Okay, let me know if that makes sense you. So see, you added there. Okay, so you added there, and then you trimmed here. Okay, so you lowered this, you cut some off here to make that shorter, and you cut it off in here to make it shorter, and then you added and added here to make it longer and longer. Okay, so that's what I think could help that. So, you know, keep me posted, Andrea, because if you need more help with that, I'll help you during the week. Um, yeah, so that's, does anybody else have any questions in terms of anything they may need to fit their raglan? Mary, keep in touch with me if taking that semen fixes your vertical issue. Um, And I think, I think that's everything I wanted to cover today if nobody has any questions. I do have to go back downstairs and check my basement to make sure the water is still not coming in. Um, it did stop raining, though. We got so much rain, it's incredible. Um, okay, oh, Andrea, uh, Jerry says, so glad this is YouTube. I'm going to have to rewatch a few times. Well, that's, you know, I really, um, I'm really grateful that I have the YouTube and I can go live and then leave it for you guys to watch over if you need to. Also, if you have questions after the live is over, please post them and I will help you. So I'll go back and review and make sure if anybody is watching now and something didn't make sense, or if I didn't cover something um, that you, I'm sorry, if I didn't cover everything 
if you post a comment, I can do it for Fit Tip Tuesday. Okay, so I do have a sloped shoulder. Um, I'm going to show somebody how to fix a sloped shoulder on a regular seam um, on Tuesday, but I can also add a raglan sleeve adjustment if anybody else thought of something that I did not cover today in terms of a fitting issue they may need help with. So definitely post your comments and I can add it to Fit Tip Tuesday video. Um, and I apologize, I did not do a Fit Tip Tuesday this week because like I said, I had a party for my husband. Um, oh yes, I do need coffee. <laughs> um, oh, Andrea said I love your rain. It's 95 here and it's only 11. Whew. Stay cool, Andrea. Maybe you need to go for the really short, short sleeve. Um, oh, Judy has crazy rain there too. Yeah, it's it's been all week. It's been okay during the first part of the day, but then we've gotten deluge, like just poured on, you know, t Monday, Tuesday, when Wednesday night. Yesterday, it just sprinkled all afternoon. Um, and then it's been raining all night and my, I think my my ground was so um, soggy that it came in the house in the basement. So, <laughs> oh, Barbara says you really appreciate you. Well, I really appreciate you watching, Barbara, because if you guys didn't join me, I would be talking to myself. So I want to take a minute and thank everybody for following along with me. If you want to join the sew along and actually work with my pattern and you don't have it, I'll put a link to the raglan sleeve patterns right after I get off. I'll also put a link to the free kangaroo pocket because I will be um, showing you how to do that. Okay, so I appreciate you guys as much as you appreciate me. So it's a win-win. Um, all right, so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I am going to be super busy um, teaching, so but I will be keeping my eye out for questions. Um, Oh, Chevron Stripe. Let me just show Chevron Stripe really quick. Thank you, Judy. All right, if you want to make a Chevron Stripe, because I did say I was going to show that. Wait, let me see one thing here. I'm looking on my YouTube to see if I already did a video. Hold on. Chevron Stripe. Raglan. Oh, I did a video. Um, so five years ago, I showed how to make the chevron stripe and how to match the stripes. So I'm going to show you how to make the pattern pieces right now so you have an idea of how to do it. But I will put a link to this. Um, the video is called Working with Chevron Stripe Fabric. So let me... Or maybe that's when it was, that might have just been when I was showing how to match the stripes. I don't know. Let me just show you this. Okay. So if you want to make a chevron stripe, I think it's flattering for the chevron to be um, lined up with the tip of the neckline. So what you're going to do is, let's say you just want to do it in the front. You can do it in the front and or back. You're going to just cut your pattern vertically where you want that, the peak or valley of the chevron to be. So like, if I cut it here, then you can cut out your pieces so they do this. You know, either like this, or you could have them going the opposite way too. So basically all you do is you cut your pattern in half where you want the peak of the chevron stripe to be, and then you add seam allowances. Okay, so that's really all you have to do. Okay, so find out Figure out where on the pattern you want the chevron stripe. And you can see here it's it's lining right up with that shoulder. Okay, and I think that's kind of an attractive place to put it. Um, in the back, it's a little bit lower. It's, it's off to the side. You can't see it. But I, I could have put it up here too. Okay, so just decide where you want it front and back. Cut your pattern in half vertically where you want it. And then add seam allowances back in. And then I'm going to post a link to the video that shows how to match those stripes. Okay, that's already on my YouTube. Um, I'll put a link to that video underneath this video if you want to watch that. All right, is that good, Janie? Okay. 
Hi, Terry. Oh, Terry, thank you. Great YouTube. I am back watching. Thanks, Mary. Oh, Mary says, has it been that long already? I remember that. Can I just tell you, I cannot get over how fast time is flying by. Like, Lenny and I celebrated our 12th wedding anniversary already. We've been living in, you know, uh, we've been living in this house for 12 years. My girls are 22 and 24 years old now. How did that happen? It just blows my mind. Like, time is just going by really fast. But definitely that video was from five years ago. So that was a long time ago. Um, all right, so you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and have a happy weekend. Um, and I will see you for Fit Tip Tuesday. And I will see you next week for Fab Fit Friday when I will show you my actual adjusted sleeve and pieces. And I'll show you how to cut those out. Um, and I think I'm going to play with how we're going to finish everything so I can have it ready to show you for next week too. So um, I hope you're enjoying part one of the rag and sleeve um, so along and I'm going to get off and I'm going to put links to the patterns. I think the patterns are already on there but I'm going to go find that video showing how to match stripes um, so you can look at that too without searching for it. So you guys have a oh and the other thing is we made 20,000 yay so I'm going to have some sort of giveaway for that, um, and I'm going to launch it next week because I'm too tired to think of it right this second, but I reached 20,000 subscribers yesterday while I was at dinner with my sewing friends, so that was super exciting. So again, thank you all for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, I remember when I had like 100 subscribers, <laughs> so it is kind of fun that it's growing, and I really appreciate each one of, each one of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon, and if you're taking shorts for everybody with me this week at Stitches, I will see you tomorrow. Okay, so have a nice day. Okay, bye!